Joining us today, we have a project manager with over 14 years of experience in the management of multi-million pound project budgets across the various boroughs of London, having provided her extensive knowledge and experience in the inner workings of economic generation. She's also known as a cycle-breaking coach, having founded the u Force organization, which aims to break cycles of generational poverty through empowerment. Add to that, she's a co-author of the first secondary school textbook written in sync with the criteria of national curriculum book on the history of Black Britain's influence on British history covering a period of 70 years. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to Miss Paula Perry. Hi. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Awesome. Thank you How's me. your day? Yeah, very, pretty good. Yeah. It's exciting now. It's not, we're not in October, is it? We're not in October now. We're in the next month. Yeah. November, November, December, whatever like that. November. Now, why are we doing this show and it's not in October? Because um, black British or black history yes. um, shouldn't be just contained to one month. Yes. Um, we do have a month um, mm -hmm. that to celebrate black black history. Yes, yes. But it don't need to be confined to one month. We yes. can we can con continuously be learning all year round. So I believe that's why you want to yes, yes. still continue act, the act, topic, act, actually, especially yeah. with your, um, yeah. your challenge. Yes, yes, actually. <laughs> I'm glad that you're in tune, actually. <laughs> I was actually testing, you know, because most people say before they come on the show, they do a research first. <laughs> well, anyhow, Paula, you're the founder of Youth For Us, yes. an organization which supports families to break negative cycles of generational poverty. Yes. Uh, can you explain to our viewers um, a little bit about what the organization does yeah. and some insights how our family begin to break cycles? Right, so <coughs> the organization is about breaking generational cycles and I use my own experiences, yes. life experiences of breaking cycles because mm -hmm. I've been the first to achieve many things in my family yes. and it's also led to my children's path in life going in a different direction mm -hmm. of what it could be. Yes. And most of us see generational poverty as strictly finance. Yes. Um, not having enough finance to meet your daily living, yes. but it does. It includes um, parenting. Mm -hmm. It includes it includes spirituality. It includes education, mm -hmm. um, in, as well as finance. And all four of those things, the lack of it, can lead to families having um, feeling hopeless. Yes. Um, not believing that they can achieve, not believing that they can um, overcome things mm -hmm. in their environment. Mm -hmm. So that's the key reason why I started the organisation. Yes. I run financial seminars. I do one-to-one -one mentoring with young people. I do family mediations as well. So it's about using my own experiences and showing people that your environment does not dictate your future. And I believe yeah. that's quite very important. Uh, is that more on finances, this bit? Of, so, yeah. so finances is a part of it. So, mm. you know, I use my experience in finances and my, as you gain knowledge, mm. you start doing different things. Um, but it leads to someone showing you or, or you actually knowing something different in order to do something different. Yeah. So I believe that, if I give you an example, I'm having a seminar around finances in December mm. and I've done a few, and what it does is it opens up people's mind that money is not just a tool to be spent. Yes. Money is actually a tool that enables you to create more money. But yes. if you don't know it, you're unable to, to use it in that sense. And, 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 is, and do you believe that there's a move, especially within the black community, mm -hmm. with the whole aspect of, as I use this coin phrase, yeah. the transformation of the black pound for argument's okay. sake? You know? Yeah, I, I believe that people are becoming a lot more conscious mm -hmm. about the importance of helping another organisation. Yes. You, where you spend your money, that's how a community flourishes. Yes. Um, so I believe we're get, becoming a lot more conscious in that we need to be supporting yes. each other's businesses, yes. ideas, in order for the black pound, as you say, to flourish yeah. within the community yeah. for us to grow, because that's how other communities grow. Yes. They, they spend within their own communities and yeah. you're able to, for example, you know, the newly um, Polish communities yes. in, 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 in London, UK, yeah. in the UK. Um, there's supermarket, Polish supermarkets, there's Polish shops, there's Polish, um, quite a few organisations. Mm -hmm. And that can only happen if um, the community is supporting that to of happen, other, yeah, yeah? Yeah. supporting it to happen. Yeah. So, so do you think then, uh, let's say for the, the black community, mm -hmm. for argument's sake, who has been here for years, mm -hmm. and the Polish has just been here just recently, uh -huh. 
um, and they are somewhat thriving. Uh -huh. What do you think is the, the factor that created this now gap, whereby they are maybe thriving ahead yes. of the black community? Again, it, it, it boils down to the support. Again, it, it boils down to the, the community network, because mm. having a community is one place to live somewhere, but a community you have you have local businesses yes, yes. Um, within a community or have local functions. Yes. And that that's what creates a community mm -hmm. where you, you, you own premises that, yes. for instance, um, youth centres, young people can go to because mm -hmm. it's owned within the community. And if we lack that, um, it's hard for us to, to thrive if, yes. if we're segmented or we're spending our money with everybody else yes. as, as opposed to spending it within the community. That's interesting. I had a guest earlier and I, was, I said she was a dynamic woman and, and the more I'm finding out is that uh, uh, every woman these last days, if you get to understand them, there's a dynamic feature yes, that well, she left and she actually accepted that she's dynamic okay. when you realise that everybody's dynamic. But what created that dynamism mm -hmm. in yourself? And I'm going to take it back now. What was the, the motivating factor that makes mm -hmm. you want to go down this particular route? Again, I'll bring it back to my own childhood. I yes. had what you would call a disadvantaged childhood. Mm -hmm. um, technically, I should have been a statistic in, yes. in certain areas of my life. But personally, I believe within myself, I've always known that although I didn't have a role model to follow from, I always knew that I was going to elevate from my environment, if yes. that makes sense. Um, and again, I was a, a young mother. Mm -hmm. So I've got children that I need to make sure that I'm the foundation yes. and I'm the person that, that I'm able to direct their life in a different direction. So that, and I've, I've achieved it. Um, I said earlier that I've been the first person in my yes, family yes, to, really, yeah. to attend university. Mm -hmm. I'm the first person in the family to own over a certain threshold, mm -hmm. um, have a profession and, you know, do many things in yes. life. So again, that's something that I had to learn myself, and that's what I want to share back out with right. the community, that it can be done. Your environment does not dictate mm -hmm. your future, but your mindset is very important. It's interesting what forward. you said, that you're the first mm -hmm. that did the breakthrough, and uh, you never had maybe a particular support. Yes. But what you're making sure is that you're sending the elevator down. That's correct. And, and because sometimes persons will say, no, I did this by myself, man. you need to do it, you need to work hard, but mm -hmm. your perception is that, you need to help. Others. Yes, definitely. Um, I believe definitely in order to do better, you have to know better. Mm -hmm. But somebody might have to show you the yes. way first. Someone might yeah. have to just turn on that light switch. Yes. And that's something that I definitely want to do within my community, those around me. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone benefits. And once you know something, once you know better, you do yeah. better. And that's a key thing about me. Well, they're saying Jamaica, once you know you, once you go, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so once you've been there, you know, yeah. and nobody can actually change that, that framework. Yeah. So but, I think, yeah. so, sorry to please, cut in please, there. Yes. Again, for myself, um, my business thing, I say, you know, empowering you for empowered us. Yes. So if I empowered you, that empowers us, yes. your children, your family members, and ultimately the wider community. Yes. So once you're in your best place mentally, mm. spiritually, um, physically, emotionally, mm. that automatically has a vibration that feeds out yes. to those around you. Say, so what is it with Silver? And I want, yes. I want some of that. And yes. they will start to learn or gravitate to you. And that gravitation with the positiveness and the good mindset yes. will spread. So therefore, what you're saying then is that once you get that piece of information and that knowledge, it is not just for you to go and sit down with. You are now empowered mm -hmm. and it's a duty to teach others, that's bring correct. them up. Yes. That's powerful. Thank so, you. And that's the essence of you for us. That's the essence wow, of you for wow. us. We can promote it then. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, I think I got the brand in there very clearly for mm -hmm. you for us. What you get and what you learn from the empowering teaching of Paula Perry and the you for us, yeah. the onus is upon yourself to actually take it out there and to bring others up. That's correct. That's powerful. That's correct. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, a little bit now, um, I want to go back to the bit about the extensive experience that you've had. I want to go back into the mm -hmm. regen reg regeneration project. Okay. Um, um, in your opinion, what are the negative impacts, if mm -hmm. any, of regeneration projects? And how can these projects be better tailored to serve the community they mm -hmm. are meant to be reviving? And I say that, and I set that stage there. Why I set that stage there is because of how uh, especially the black communities mm -hmm. are now whereby there is uh, maybe a lack okay. of some type of funding or so. Mm -hmm. 
in this particular fray, how do you, what do you think about the whole regeneration project, projects, um, especially in the black community? I think the regeneration projects, I've, I've managed mm. projects in a number of sectors. So there's, yes. there's, there's capital projects or yes. building projects, there's helping businesses to grow, and yes. then there's the local community projects. And for me, um, a lot of the projects are about helping people to get into employment, yes. helping people to... Um, yeah, to, to maybe be entrepreneurs. Yes. But the key thing for me, sometimes it's about that, some things that you can't talk, it's that self-confidence. Yes. It's the mindset, it's the things that, it's not easily to say, okay, can you go to a workshop yeah. and learn how to build a CV? Yeah. Or I can show you how to interview skills. There's things that's a more deep rooted, mm. and I believe those are the things that are missing from some of the projects. Mm. Um, that are out there. So sometimes you believe it's just filling a statistics to say we did this, we did that, we yes, did that. Yes, maybe it's tick boxes. Tick boxing. You're tick boxing, done that you've done it. But really there's some deep rooted issues. Mm. There's a lack of confidence. There's a lack of um, the mindset. Yes. Um, I've worked with projects with young people and trying to build them up to get into employment and so forth. And their parents have been um, the barrier. Right. Their own parents mm -hmm. have been a barrier to this. You know, how is my son supposed to get to X, Y, and Z? And where, you know, and that they're mm -hmm. meant to be that backbone in supporting. Yeah. And I'm not blaming them because it may be again they the mindset know. they don't yeah. know. So it's about it's about it's it's a holistic what we need to look at. It's not just you know how do you build a CV. It's not just you know interview skills. There's some deep rooted um, issues that needs to be. Um, addressed. If I'm to ask, um, and based on your experience, and you said the blockage come mm -hmm. from the, the parents, what would be like a classic, typical example, for argument's sake? Um, for argument's sake, if you, if you, if it's like if you grow within a family, I've got mm. a story, sorry to... Yeah, please, it, please. They, I'll, I'll do it quickly. Yeah. There's a story of a, 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 a husband who asked his wife, you know, why do you always cut off the end of the beef every time mm. you cook it? And she said, I don't know. Um, my mum does that. Yeah. She said, go and answer. Yeah. Again, so she phoned her mum, she said, I don't know, my mum does that. Yes, she yes. said, go and answer. So when she phoned the grandmother now, yeah. the grandmother said, oh, yeah, I only do that because the pots weren't big enough for <laughs> the meat. Yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So can you see how things from one generation yes. can pass on yes. just automatically because you're not, you, they're, it's a way of being. You didn't question it. You didn't question it. Mm. And you just continue on. And hence why I say breaking cycle, because sometimes in families, we, we continue a cycle because you don't know any better. And it's because that's yeah. what's grandma done. That's what's mother's done. And times, um, times change. Yes. And you have to do things in a different way. Yes, yes. And, and that's what needs to be broken. So, so I see where you're coming from. So yeah. it is like one of the things in which I say sometimes, I, I say this sometimes, like um, uh, people will say, don't put your hat where you can't reach it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and always say, I don't like that. Because that is actually saying to me, I should not strive. Right, okay. And then when you check it back, it's coming from generations upon generation. Yeah. And they realize that, hang on a second. And they likely say, go and get a job, mm -hmm. a nine to five, and get your pension. That doesn't make sense now because pension and everything. So yes. it was, so mindset. 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 Um, and we need to be teach and the entrepreneurship now yes. not every child is academic yes. but every child or every person has a, a skill yes. they have something within them that they're good at yes. and it's about nurturing those things so like you said that you know our grandparents stuff will be we want you to be a doctor we want yes. you to be a teacher we want you to have a profession mm. but there's loads of entrepreneurs right now are doing things differently and thriving yes, yes. Um, in different areas of yeah. life well ladies and gentlemen <laughs> we'll take a quick break here as you can see we're just getting deeper into things yeah. and uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about Black British history and this awesome book, which has been co-authored by Paula Perry and her peers. Thank you very much. Today, I've got a very interesting guest. She's an author, and um, there's much more about her. And of course, we're going to talk about La Petite Negresse. Am I correct? That's beautifully said. Thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> we, we have to educate our, our young children to be able to say no yeah. and to agree that that is an acceptable thing to do. But I always think of it this way. I always ask the question, do you think you are more likely to get a career progression mm -hmm. if you actually um, succumb to harassment 
Yeah. Or if you fight it, when you go back in time and you understand the Moors of, uh, of North Africa yes. actually occupied Spain from, you know, 711 AD mm. right up until 14. 192 when they were finally sort of expelled. Mm. That's over 700 years. Yes. Well, thank my guest Shayla Farrell for being on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. I've got Paula Perry, who is one of the co-authors of Black British History. Am I correct? You are correct. Awesome, man. <laughs> I went completely against the script. Paula, thank you for staying. And uh, I've been seeing you all over. I was in Birmingham okay. one day, and I was in this restaurant called Russell's. I was ready to get my nice food, and I saw you on the screen there. <laughs> that was after we did a Facebook Live, yes. or maybe before we did the Facebook Live, after we did the Facebook Live together. And uh, I, take, I, I, I videoed it, and I texted to you and said, you're in Birmingham. Yeah. You're in Bur Yes. And then, and guess what? It is still playing there it's still <laughs> because it's on like a loop yes. there and stuff like yeah. that. So it's very interesting. Um, the, the book which we're going to talk about mm -hmm. is all over and I'm seeing it with different pictures. Yes. I even did it with my kids as well. Uh, and and um, it's good. Okay. So Paula, Black British mm -hmm. History, yep. this book um, co-authored Black British History, Influences on British Culture, 1948 to 2016. Yes. This is the book, ladies and gentlemen. Tell us about it. Um, so the book's co-authored by myself mm -hmm. and my colleagues, Robin Walker, Vanika yeah. Marshall and Tony Vaughan. Yes. And how the book came about, <coughs> yep, how yeah. the book came about, we teach black, black um, studies at a Saturday school, a supplementary mm -hmm. Saturday school. A majority of our teaching is on African history, yes. so African creations, African empires and yes. what African people have brought to civilization. Yes. And while we were teaching that, we wanted to develop new content so we thought Black British history, because there's loads yes. of content here as well. So we started with the Windrush era of 1948. Okay. So it's the last 70 years mm -hmm. and how black people have influenced different cultures yes. in Britain as well. Um, as we were developing, we were teaching the children. At first, it wasn't a book. We were just right. developing content. You didn't as tell we, me about that. Yeah, as we were, <laughs> we were developing content, yeah. um, we got to 18 lessons. The children were so engaged. And then we said, you know something? This is valuable information yes. that needs to be spread with the world. So we put it into a book. It started off as 18 lessons, yes. developed into 25, and then ended with 32. Yeah. So, so explain to me. So it started not as a book, mm -hmm. but as some lectures or some yes. teachings you used to yes. have. Now, where was the vision for those lessons or those teachings? So what we, we got together as the teachers yeah. and we said, where can we start? So there's loads of different music genres. Yeah. Um, that developed from um, the Windrush era, so starting yeah. with ska, for instance. Yeah. And that developed um, white working class subcultures, mm -hmm. so ska, the mods. Mm -hmm. You've got the skinheads with the rock steady. Yes. And um, coming up to now where they will say, you know, yeah. current music with the chaps. Yeah. So a lot of that information um, we thought was very vital of how black people have influenced yes. British culture and also how black people have entered mainstream also. Yeah. So for example, um, we talk in the book about um, um, Baroness um, Valerie Amos Valid, but yeah. um, being the first black woman to enter into the House of Lords. Yes. Um, and I found out through that research is that she also head was became head of the House of Lords. Okay. And that, it, that's important, yeah, it a, yeah, important, or, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, um, important leader information, of leader of, of the House yeah, of Lords. Of um, that's, that's vital, yeah. vital information. So there's a lot of information. It goes through literature. It talks about politics, mm. sports music and the black struggle yeah. also. So listen, Paula, listen, I want to thank you so much for coming thank on the show. Thank you very much for having me. That was awesome. Thank you. And um, this is the start of a massive relationship. Mm -hmm. To know more about Paula Perry, what you can do is go to our website, silburntv.com or silburn.com. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Instagram, Facebook, and see you next time on The Silburn Show. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comment, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time. 
Greetings, my name's Paula Perry from You For Us and I'm here on the Silburn TV show. I'm doing a challenge to win a signed copy of the book Black British History. And the question is, who pioneered the keyhole surgery and what country were they from? Now you will find out how to enter this competition below and I wish you all the best. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, guess what? I've got Paula Perry, this time on the right chair, we did a video before on Facebook Live, but I wanted to get her on the right here talking about Black British history. But the most important thing, Paul, I wanted in here because it was, I don't want this show to grow up in Black history. Okay. But yes. I want to act to Black history. Most now. definitely. Because guess what? What we're saying is Black history is not just for once a month of a year, but every day. Every day, 365 <clears throat> days. We cannot learn our history in one month, even if it was for a lifetime. That's awesome. And th so therefore, <clears throat> check out this book as much as possible. And there's other books as well, which we're going to be talking about. <clears throat> but we have a show today and we talk about different things, um, how the book came about. And as well, tune in and you can watch the show sometime in the future. And make sure you teach your children black history every day. The, the onus is upon you to do that. Don't wait for a month which is October, and if you're in America, don't wait for February, mm -hmm. you do it now. And if you're in America, check out this book. I'll come and do a lecture also. Yeah. I'm, getting, <laughs> I'm getting commissions. Yeah. I'm, I'm, those Robin Walker, Bonica Marshall, Anthony Vaughan, did you know? I'm getting, and Paula Perry, I'm getting royalties. <laughs> yeah, Royal? am I getting royalties? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, <clears throat> this is what it's about. It's about sharing, it's caring, yeah. and um, Paula, I want to thank you so much. Uh, for I want to thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Any last word you want to say to people? Um, know your history. 